Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. This week we're at the Hammersmith Irish Cultural Centre in London to feature the production of Vengeance, The Demise of Oscar Wilde. John Merrigan, the producer, and Daniel Morgan, the composer, have done a wonderful job in putting this musical story together. We hope you like it. I observed all of Oscar's wonderful triumphs and most sadly I witnessed the dark days too. John Shelto Douglas, the ninth Marquess of Queensbury, the man who would change Oscar's life forever, although Oscar played his own part too. The extraordinary struggle between these two men with Lord Alfred Douglas in the middle, a son to one, a lover to another, would eventually destroy them both. Ah, before I get ahead of myself, let us begin. It's Valentine's Day, 1895, and I agreed to join Oscar in his hotel room as he was preparing for the West End premiere of The Importance of Being Earnest at St. James Theatre. So sweet of you to join me tonight. <sighs> Thank you, Oscar. Opening night of a second play running in the West End is nothing short of decadent. It's a shame that Alfred can't be here to join us on this suspicious occasion, although I see you're wearing a buttonhole to remember it. Yes, how observant you are. <laughs> I wear my own lucky green carnation, and for darling Bosie, I've declared Lily of the Valley as a theme for tonight. He's far away in Algiers, but here with us in the spirit. He's written to me, conveying his warmest wishes. They do love you, though, Oscar, and they always will. Let us hope so. Although, I have nothing but contempt for so-called high society and how they regard art. Through my words, I hold up a mirror to expose what they really are. I despise their do-good earnestness and hypocrisy. It is I who is judging them, and yet they cannot see it. The fools! Tonight will be another triumph for you, Oscar. Yes, as long as Queensbury doesn't intervene to spoil it all. He underestimates this Irishman, at least. Oscar Wilde has been in my life since being uh, growing up in Dublin, and uh, he was always used to quote when I was being a naughty boy or when I was being good. And so he's always been in life. And my mother came up with a phrase, she said, to get to know the work, get to know the author. So what we uh, have always been interested in is Oscar Wilde. So about at the beginning of lockdown, we said, wouldn't it be nice to write a play about Oscar Wilde with music mm -hmm. and try and find a different way into the story. So from that point, uh, we did a bit of research, a lot of research, but actually writing the play only took three days. And we wrote it, uh, it came out, just poured out from us. And uh, then we had our first script. And then it was up to Danielle to try and write some music to go with that. So I spent an awful lot of time with John, absorbing his writing, absorbing the way he understood 
where he was coming with the angle. Um, and then the words between John and I, we started to write the lyrics, trying to weave them around the script, and the music came. And what we wanted to achieve from the music was the emotion. Our play or musical drama doesn't really take the plot forward in terms of the music like traditional musical theatre. It's to explore the internal thoughts and the monologues of what's going in inside these other characters. So the emotion comes through the music. Yes, you're right. You are always by my side, my loyal friend. Come now, we mustn't be late. The cab is waiting. The part itself is obviously, you know, well-renowned. Um, but the arc, the emotional arc that I get to go on throughout the performance is amazing. I mean, you get to see the, the highs of him absolutely being on top of the world at the beginning um, to the absolute emotional kind of, you know, depths that he kind of ends up in at the end. And it's, it's a great part for any actor to play. Um, obviously, lots of actors have played in the past, but um, it's nice to do a stage version and it's nice to do my own kind of spin on it. The mother of a famous son what more could I do? Don't be afraid, my dear. You've done nothing wrong. All they want is to bring you down. Show them your strong. There were Now, to be the mother of Oscar Wilde required her to be an exceptional lady, and she was. Since his childhood, she was a towering figure in his life, a social rebel in her own way, using the moniker Speranza. She played the well-liked host to the literati of London, as she had done in Dublin for years before. So, what are you going to do, Astor? Mama, the man is mad. He refuses, refuses to leave me and dear Bosie alone. Oscar. You're both parading around London like actors in one of your own plays, drawing attention to yourselves at every turn. I have nothing to be ashamed of. No, but you have to be more careful. These are dangerous times. The same dangers didn't bother you in Dublin when you were holding court in Merrion Square. Practically everyone who came through the door was a, a bohemian or a rebel. Yes, but that was behind my own closed doors. And this is not Dublin, Oscar. So I play Robbie Ross, um, Oscar Wilde's long-term friend, um, who met him when he was 17, as in Robbie Ross was 17. And um, we had a bit of a relationship, which didn't last very long, but they remained lifelong friends. And, um, and actually, Robbie Ross is the person who, uh, after Oscar died, collated all of his works and pulled everything together and basically protected his estate. If it wasn't for Robbie Ross, we might not have Oscar Wilde now. So uh, he did a lot of work to try and protect Oscar. So in the Oscar Wilde society, Robbie Ross is a bit of a hero. He's the good, he's the good guy in the play. Well, he must be a good guy because you've got a great smile on your face and you're going on stage very shortly. I am, yeah, yeah. Although normally I get to play bad guys, so it's very cathartic to be a good guy for a change. So, yeah. No, Robbie Ross, is, he's, a, he's an interesting character, actually. Um, he, he actually died at the same age I am now. Um, died quite young. Um, but he achieved quite a lot in his life and, um, and, and as I said, he was, he was Oscar's best friend, always trying to help him, helped him financially throughout all of his problems um, and, and tried to keep him safe and protect him his whole life and he was in love with him pretty much the whole time but wasn't able to do anything about it because Oscar wasn't in love with him, they were just friends. So it's pretty, uh, pretty difficult for Robbie. Rob Robbie really doesn't have a good time, you know. Robbie's always picking up the mess that Oscar leaves behind. <laughs> it's all over the papers. Frankly, I'm surprised it hasn't happened sooner. Yes, a sordid affair. One that might have wider implications. How so? Surely Queensbury will win and the matter will be finished. What if Wilde wins? That would be most unfortunate. He already poses around London, expressing his opinion on any topic he likes. Whilst I dislike the man's arrogance, he's no more than a nuisance salesman peddling his views about nothing of any substance. In the main, yes. However, with his growing confidence and public profile, he is becoming noticeably more vocal on social issues. And lest we forget, 
He and his mother both supported Mr. Parnell on Home Rule. Oh, yes. I see the connection. The Irish question is a major concern for the PM, and there are rumours a fresh bill may pass the House. I fear that could be fatal to the government, and worse, another blow to the British Empire. Quite so. Well, I come from Hungary and I am currently doing my PhD in Ireland and the reason why I decided to, to come on a trip to London, Hammersmith Irish Cultural Centre today, is that um, I wanted to attend uh, today's Vengeance, the Demise of Oscar Wilde. This is an immense opportunity and I think uh, the, the, the play was impressive. It, it really moved me to tears. I'm doing my PhD um, on Oscar Wilde's poetry in Ireland at Maynooth University at the moment. And I would like to explore a bit more his um, unique sensibility and the musicality present in his poetry and especially the intertextual connections of his poetry. Yes, Robert, my reputation too. Why does nobody take me and my writing seriously? I, I've had enough! And I want my damned father out of my life for good. Indeed, Bosie. Bobby, I know you mean well, but me and my art are one and the same. But Queensbury is out to crush me and wipe away my legacy as if neither had ever existed. And my dear Mama insists I must defend the family honour as she did before in Dublin. But she lost that case! <laughs> and it brought your father virtual ruin! It was a mistake. They should have settled out of court and you should do the same thing now. Honor must be served. They say that they think I've gone too far. And we all know who they are. All they want is afternoon tea. All they want High society. All they want is to talk about me. But their life's a lie. Their life's a Oh, you could hear a pin drop in there tonight. The audience is so engrossed in this story. We are going to take a little break and we'll see you shortly. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lola Vita is an award-winning independently run Italian restaurant located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. 
Welcome back. This week we're at the Hammersmith Irish Cultural Centre in London for the production of Vengeance, The Demise of Oscar Wilde. I need you desperately tomorrow night. I will explain. How does it feel when you're on your own? How does it feel when there's no one else at home? How does it feel when I don't call? How does it feel walking the streets of London? We have ended up with an amazing cast, uh, all really experienced actors, uh, all really engaged in the project. Um, and then the next part we had to do was get the crew. Um, and we have an amazing crew who have done the design of the lights, the design of the sound and so on. And it's a complex show to stage and to produce. Musicals are always tricky to produce. So there's been an enormous amount of work done through them. And then the last part of the process is really to make sure the story, we're staying true to the real facts of the story of Oscar Wilde. So we have uh, worked with very good friends of ours who are advisors, historical advisors. So we have uh, Eleanor Fritz Simons, who uh, wrote a book about Oscar Wilde's women, the women in his life, and she's been our historical advisor. And we have also had uh, Professor Pamela Howard, uh, who's an OBA, and she has been our advisor on staging and producing the show. Who could believe that I'd be something I'm not? Who could believe that I'd be king of the top? When everything had changed, simply we were not. Everything can change, and I don't know why. Everything happened overnight. Two days later, the libel trial started well for us. On the first day, Edward Clark gave an impassioned plea on behalf of Oscar his right to express his art. Oscar was brilliant in his exchanges with Carson. The mood changed, however, when Carson informed the court that he was preparing to bring witnesses to testify to Oscar's liaisons with young men. Rather than risk the facts coming out in court, Oscar was forced to withdraw the libel. You obviously want to be able to portray it as truthfully as, as you can um, to who you think the character was. So obviously it starts with a lot of research from my point of view, discussions um, in rehearsals um, and all of that. But um, it's been a really enjoyable experience actually to kind of really get into the part and, and like I said, you know, find the nuances and, and kind of you know of his character and I'm still finding them now which is great and I think that's the best thing about a stage performance is that every single night you know you can find new things you can you can kind of play around with the character which is great. When we first started the tour um, we had to abide by lots of pandemic rules so um, the show itself you know you couldn't go up to other actors and you couldn't touch them you can just so it was very difficult um, but it also allowed us to find some other ways of communicating on stage without actually having to go up to each other so that now the rules are relaxed and we can kind of get back into it. Um, it's nice having been through that to then get back to actually interacting with uh, the other characters. Your Honour, it has taken us a mere three hours to decide on this case. In the matter of Regina versus Wilde, we the jury find this man guilty! Bring him down, down to the menace. Bring him down, he's a menace. Bring him down, I want vengeance. Oscar, act fast and you can be safely in France by morning. Think of your future, your artistic legacy. And I, may I say nothing? Don't be afraid, Oscar. If you run like a coward, then I will have nothing more to do with you. And I, May I say nothing? If you won't listen to me, 
listen to others. Forget about Alfred Douglas. It's your only chance. Please, Oscar. And I, may I say nothing? It is all just a game, is it not? I hate him and everyone in that damn courtroom. And I, may I say nothing? Enough for what this man has done. He's a menace to society. You should have cut and run. The idea of vengeance really was John's idea, and he wanted a title that was going to be short and snappy. Um, was going to make people go, "Well, what's that about?" Um, and ultimately, it's about the two men really going after one another. They both have got a point to prove. So the whole idea of vengeance, revenge, um, you know, having your day, um, that's really where it comes from, yeah. Oi, isn't that the famous Oscar Wilde? Yes, sir. <laughs> the famous queer, now in a prisoner's uniform. How the mighty hair fallen. You're so pretty now, are you? You sticking me the things you did with those boys. Sounds too good for you. They should finish you off. It's a massive team effort and going from theatre to theatre, everyone's had to work and adjust. You know, spaces are bigger, spaces are smaller, uh, the quick changes, the props, swapping props, weights and stuff like that. So it's been very, very rewarding, but it's obviously been sometimes a bit logistically a bit of a nightmare. Normally when you go and you do a musical, the songs actually are part of the story and they take you from one place to another. They're, they're important to the story. But here, they're more reflections on the characters' inner monologues and how they feel. So this play, um, it's getting good reaction because we've never really seen the stories of the people who surrounded Oscar before. It's normally very Oscar-focused. Well, here we get to see Oscar, but also the effect Oscar had on everybody around him. We all did Oscar Wilde at one stage when we were at school. Well, the Ballad of Reading Jail was the biggest one, but yeah, and we, we read bits about him and that, but to see it performed on stage to musical accompaniment and actors of top notch was something else. You know, Robbie Ross really introduces the whole show very, very well, and the whole cast are second to none. It's been a great success, and it, the word is getting out, and it's, you know, the advertising, where it's gone to, and the people that have responded has just been amazing. For all our viewers, you two people are very well known as the Crawley Irish Festival. How many years has it actually been going for John? Well, this, we've not notched up 24 of them. Uh, we're in, we've been involved for the last 18 or 19 of them. Uh, we thought we'd get to the 25th one, but you know things uh, came to light that we just couldn't perform and progress it. And we just had to call a halt to it and say that's it for the time being. Hopefully somebody else will pick it up, but at this stage, I can't see one happening this year, 2022, but um, fingers crossed, you know, from small acorns, you know, we, we, we started something big 25 years ago, hopefully it'll develop even further. Well, you know, both of you have put in so much work into the Crawley Irish Festival. And of course, we've been with you on many occasions now. It's been hugely popular, a great day for the Irish. Everybody enjoyed it down here. Well, a lot of that is down to you, Martin, and Annette there behind the screen. You've made us look great. and what you've done to your own TV show, show, spreading the word, putting Crawley on the map all over Great Britain is applaudable. You know, there is always something bubbling all the time. And this show, you know, Vengeance is something that's ready to take off as well. It started in London. The whole story starts in London with the importance of being earnest. And I'm sure it'll continue in London and the, the South East here, and hopefully international. And I hope you can follow us there as well. Goodbye. Oscar, and rest in peace, my dearest friend. If you seek revenge, it's better you dig to grave. The story won't end well. Cause you're
want to take the tour to Ireland. Uh, there have been inquiries about the tour in France and in America and in Australia and we want to do an album of the music, uh, maybe a radio play. So we have a lot of exciting plans. Uh, we have to get the, the funding for this, we have to get everything pulled together and managed, uh, but we're sure we can execute it and you know, keep an eye on our website, keep an eye on the news and you'll see us somewhere in the coming months. And I never thought I'd get the opportunity of shaking the hand of Oscar Wilde. Pleasure. A pleasure to meet you too. Thank you. Can I ask one more round of applause for you? Am I please ask that this is the biggest round of applause you give this evening? As we show our solidarity and love, the people of the Ukraine. What a great production and well done to everybody who took part and keep an eye out on their website for future tour dates. Well that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Just to remind you Henry McGlade is back with us next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock with his show from County Mayo and we are here at 7.30 with the Irish in the UK. Until then, take good care.